Very scary. Cancer should be taken very, very seriously. But cancer is not something you need to be defeated by. It's a good day, it's a bad day. It's still another day that I'm here and I'm so fortunate and blessed for that day. Hopefully sooner rather than later, you move on. You learn from things. Maybe my point in getting this cancer was to tell people, hey, there's hope. You can get better. <laughs> victorious that you're not going to be defeated and have faith because that really helps you push another day another day another day and that's the day you actually cross the finishing line it did kind of help me with my energy levels i didn't i don't think that my energy decreased as much as i anticipated and probably not as much as my oncologist anticipated as well I said this cancer is just one page in my life and it's not the book of my life but i'll deal with it but I'll not allow it to leach and leak into my life. A very good evening to one and all. I hope everyone is safe and sound at home and have mustered the courage to get through the trying times such as these. After all, as Vivian Green once rightly said, life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass. It's about learning to dance in the rain. As we all know, October is a Cancer Awareness Month. A Flight and CC has been conducting this Cancer Awareness in memory of our beloved late ex cadet surgeon Anjali Anil Ma'am, who lost a half-fought bot battle against breast cancer on account of late detection. This year, we are collaborating with the Can Protect Foundation to conduct a breast cancer awareness webinar. In memory of our beloved late ex cadet surgeon Anjali Anil Ma'am, we present a short video dedicated to her.
Can Protect Foundation is a leading non-profit organization for women's health, ensuring awareness, education, and screening for breast and cervical cancers. They have provided free breast checkups for around 30,000 women in the past five years and have detected hundreds of pre- and early-stage cases of breast and cervical cancers. Today, we have Dr. Sunita Prabhaka, ma'am, joining us for a live session. She is the founder and the president of Can Product Foundation. She has 26 years of experience. She graduated from Benares Hindu University with an MD and did her specialization in obstetrics and gynecology from London. She has received many awards and honors like Medical Socio Activist Award 2018, given by the Indian Medical Association, Amar Ujala Samarpan or Samman Award by Amar Ujala and many more. In 2018, she was featured among Uttaragand's medical pillars. Currently, she is the head of the gynecology department at CMI Hospital, Daradun. On behalf of A Flight NCC, I welcome you, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. First of all, I want to thank Devshri and Kavya for this kind introduction. And uh, I also want to thank A Flight NCC of NIT Trichy for taking this initiative. Uh, we all know that October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month all over the world, and uh, it is great initiative on the part of uh, you know your organization that in memory of your cadet uh, Anjali Anil, uh, which I was told that uh, suffered from breast cancer, that you have taken the initiative to you know spread awareness and education about uh, breast cancer uh, i before i start my presentation i would just want to give you a brief introduction about can protect foundation we started this organization in uttarakhand around about 5 years back we were already working in this field for almost uh, 15 years now it's already 20 years but uh, you know after working for around about 15 years we realized that it is mainly the uh, you know lack of uh, awareness and education and knowledge about prevention of breast and cervical cancer, which is killing so many women in this part of the country. And as you all know that Uttarakhand is a hilly state and uh, the healthcare facilities are uh, very poor. It is very difficult, you know, sometimes even for delivery, women have to walk for many kilometers to get some adequate healthcare. So from where they are going to get facilities for screening of breast cancer and cervical cancer. Again, they had very little knowledge about menstrual hygiene. Uh, anemia and a lot of other common problems were very prevalent. So we realized that we need some organization, uh, uh, you know, a uh, proper infrastructure where we can educate women about prevention of diseases. Once you suffer from a disease, obviously, you know, you have very little options. But when you're working towards prevention, you are actually trying that you don't suffer from that disease. So today we'll be basically, uh, you know, focusing upon breast cancer because as we know that uh, October is breast cancer uh, prevention month. But I also want to touch upon another very important cancer called cervical cancer. Cervical cancer means the cancer of the uh, mouth of the uterus. And that is again a very, very common cancer in India. And uh, again, I want to uh, thank Mr. Nishant and Mr. Raju Roy who, uh, you know, got in touch with Mr. Samir Datta of CanProtect Foundation. And uh, because of their efforts today, we are able to, you know, um, join hands together to have a presentation about uh, breast and cervical cancer. So um, can we have the PPT, please? Can you see the slides? Okay. 
so uh, you know we have round about 8 yes, now 8 yeah, like you can can you see the slides on the screen okay yes, so uh, among all the cancers in women you know women suffer from many cancers be it breast cancer cervical cancer cancer of the lung stomach and a lot of other common cancers but breast cancer is one of the most common cancers in women uh, we say that there are around about 8 lakh new cases of cancers in our country and among these cancers almost 2 lakh cancers are uh, breast cancers the biggest problem with breast cancer in in our in our country is that 80% of the cancers are diagnosed late if you look at the western world which has already you know uh, started diagnosing almost 80% cases in stage 1 we are almost the other way we are diagnosing almost 80% of our cancers in a late stage and as we all know that so far the success of uh, any cancer treatment is concerned the earlier the diagnosis the better is the prognosis so if we pick up a breast cancer case in stage 1 the success rate of treatment is almost 80% and if we pick up a breast cancer case at round in stage 3 or 4 the success rate drops to 15% so early diagnosis is the key to successful treatment so so if you look at indian scenario we know that every 4 minutes a woman is diagnosed with breast cancer and every 13 minute one woman dies of it it is that common so if we see almost 200 to 300 200 women die of uh, you know breast cancer every day which is a very very big number and you know if there is a flight cra crash and there are 200 people dying in it the whole newspaper the whole media you know the whole world is talking about it but a disease with which 200 women are dying every day we are not talking about it so among all the cancer deaths in women 20 to 20, 30 25 to 30% of the deaths in women occur because of breast cancer again a very sad scenario is this that this is one cancer in which the incidence is decreasing previously we used to say that the peak of breast cancer comes when a woman is around about 50 to 70 years of age now that incidence has decreased to around about 30 to 30 uh, 50 years so see 30 to 50 years is that age where the women is in their peak of productivity where their profession is concerned their family life is concerned their own you know personal achievements are concerned so breast cancer is now affecting women of much younger age group so almost 50% of the women who suffer from breast cancer are actually less than 50 years and again as i was saying that the five year survival which is the success rate of treatment is less than 60% in india and if you look at the developed world it is almost 90% and why is this happening because in america they are picking up 80% of their breast cancer cases in stage 1 or stage 2 and in india we are picking up most of our cases at a very very late stage so if we look at how these western countries are winning the battle of breast cancer the most important thing is screening what do i mean by screening when i say screening it is a test which is done in people who don't have any symptoms say suppose you are having uh, you know uh, weight gain and you go and check your blood for thyroid this is not screening screening means that you don't have any symptoms but you go and do your blood sugar your hemoglobin or your thyroid test so if we talk talk about screening among women what is very important that together with doing these routine tests like hemoglobin sugar checking your blood pressure and weight every year it is important that most women should also do routine screening for cervical and breast cancer cervical cancer screening is done by a small test called pap smear and breast cancer screening i will be telling you shortly how do we screen for breast cancer so screening means all women should go through these tests to know that whether they are suffering from breast cancer and why do we need screening one because breast cancer is very common number two breast cancer will not cause any symptoms so till the disease is in a very advanced stage breast cancer is not going to cause any symptoms so a disease which is does not have any symptoms there is no way for a woman to know that she is suffering from breast cancer so in in western countries they are trying to detect non palpable or very very small lumps they are also aiming that they pick up most of their diseases in stage 1 for which public awareness and education is very very important so coming to what is cancer see we all know that the cells in our body they multiply 
this multiplication is a controlled multiplication when the cells multiply after a certain stage they stop multiplying so cancer occurs when these cells forget that they are they are supposed to stop multiplying and because of some kind of a genetic defect some gene which regulates this multiplication does not function properly and the cell starts multiplying uh, you know in an uncontrolled fashion so this is the basic principle for every cancer so 90% of the breast cancers are because of a genetic abnormality which happen because of a aging process and wear and tear in the general life so what are the risk factors of breast cancer as i said that it is one of the commonest cancers of women and one in eight women can suffer from breast cancer in fact you will be surprised to know that 1% of males also suffer from breast cancer so breast cancer can also occur in males so many a times i am asked this question that is breast cancer a disease of only women no though it is most common in women but it can also happen in men because sometimes the the lumps occur in the fatty tissue of the breast in males also again uh, looking at the risk factors though breast cancer can occur to any women but it is definitely more common in people who have a family history so if you have a family history that means somebody like your grandmother your uh, maternal aunt or your mother or your sister has suffered from breast cancer that definitely makes you more likely to have breast cancer so you should be more careful you should start doing your breast self examination at a much younger age and you should undergo tests like mammography and sonomammography in a much more regular fashion though it is said that breast cancer increases as the age increases but you will be surprised to know that i pick up breast cancer cases in girls as young as 18 to 20 year old of age and so many times women who have just given birth and you know they are breastfeeding their babies can also suffer from breast cancer again looking at the period history or the menstrual history especially women or girls who start having periods at a younger age and women who continue to have periods till a later a long age tend to have more risk of breast cancer again if you have heavy periods if you have hormonal problems if you have irregular periods then again you are more likely to have breast cancer it is seen that breast cancer is less common in women who have given birth to their children and who are, who have breastfed their babies so breastfeeding has definitely a protective effect against breast cancer so definitely those women who don't get married till a late age or who delay pregnancies because of whatever reason see nowadays because of uh, pressure of careers because of education the women are getting married at a much later young much older age so they are having children also at a older age so that again increases the risk of breast cancer all over the world we are talking about this that why the breast cancer is increasing so of course stress obesity pollution radiation food adult uh, adulteration there are so many factors but a very very important factor is also delaying pregnancies and also not doing adequate breastfeeding in fact one of the reasons why breast cancer is also increasing in uh, you know remote uh, villages is because even in villages women are not breastfeeding again obesity it is seen that less physical activity gaining weight is a, a very important risk factor for breast cancer if you are somebody who is regular with exercise who does even 20 minutes of walk every day you can decrease your risk of breast cancer by almost 50% so the two most important reasons for increase in the risk of breast cancer is number one obesity number two of course in women the increasing incidence of smoking and alcohol intake we are doing a lot of harm to our bodies by you know imitating west and uh, we are forgetting that any form of tobacco in india 50% of the cancer related deaths are directly related to tobacco intake of any forms tobacco not only increases the risk of a uh, lung cancer or mouth cancer lot of people think that you know i am if somebody is smoking then it can only increase the risk of lung cancer it is not the case tobacco has lot of harmful chemicals these harmful chemicals also predispose you to a lot of other cancers like cervical cancer like breast cancer cancer of the stomach so again one has to realize that you know decreasing your alcohol intake totally stopping smoking being regular with your exercise Uh, maintaining an ideal weight are the most important preventive factors which you can do to yourself to prevent breast cancer again if you if you have a history of some other cancer 
you know so a lot of cancers are related to a single gene like you must have heard about breca gene lot of people have heard that you know angelina jovi she went through a you know a prophylactic mastectomy because she had a particular gene in her body so certain tests are available by which you can check your genetic predisposition towards the cancers again hormonal intake one should never take hormones without doctor supervision many a times what happens then in india people have this tendency that you know once they have taken the medicines from a doctor they will continue taking it whether it's thyroid medicine or sugar medicine they forget that they have to go to the doctor repeatedly to decide the dose of the medicine so again i am warning here that if somebody is on any kind of hormonal treatment or on birth control pills it is important to go back to your doctor repeatedly and ask that are there any tests i am supposed to do is this the right dose for me and can i continue taking it so though i have enumerated these high risk factor uh, these uh, you know risk factors but one must remember that 90% of the women who suffer from breast cancer do not have any such high risk factor so anybody who might be having doing regular exercise might not be smoking ideal weight no family history can still suffer from breast cancer so that is why it is very important to do regular screen so again what are the signs and symptoms as i said that many women don't have any signs and symptoms but what are the common symptoms lump in the breast again i want to remind all the people who are listening to this program that most of the lumps in the breast are benign so please do not get scared if you feel a lump in the breast most of the lumps are a benign tumors which are called fibroadenomas and these fibroadenomas can easily be treated by very very simple surgery so if you the important thing to remember is that if ever you find a lump in the breast don't get scared go and see your doctor another important symptom of breast cancer is the pulling in of the nipple so if you look at the nipple in the mirror and you feel that it is retracted inside or it is pulled inside there is any change in the skin dimpling around the nipple you must again consult the doctor immediately any type of skin changes whether it is redness or dimpling or the skin appearing like a orange peel can again be a warning sign any kind of nipple discharge whether it is milky whether it is red whether it is green or brownish any type of nipple discharge needs a doctor's attention immediately so when somebody is doing a breast self examination it is very important that you also check by pinching the nipple that there is no abnormal discharge from the nipple again if you notice that on your undergarments on your bra there is some kind of a stain when you get up in the morning and you change your undergarments and you see that there is any stain on the undergarment on the bra then you must consult the doctor immediately so as i said that breast cancer is very common and again i told you that there are no high risk factors and there are no common signs and symptoms there are many women who will not be able to feel any lump and they might be still having breast cancer so among so many you know one when i'm saying that one in eight women all of us who are listening to this program one in eight of us can suffer from breast cancer so how to detect it so one has to follow a good breast health plan and it is very important that every girl after the age of 20 must start following a good breast health plan here i also want to remind you that you know camp protect foundation has a program called meri ma swasthma the theme of this program was you know girls who have mothers grandmothers or aunts who are not very educated or who have not gotten the opportunity to come to big cities or in the schools and who cannot learn this breast self examination by learning through social media or by reading it is important that you learn it the main purpose of today's workshop is that if we can teach you breast self examination you must go back and at least help five of your relatives your friends all your aunts mothers and grandmothers how to do a breast self examination so a good breast health plan means that every month every women must do a self breast examination once in a year or once in 6 months depending upon her age and her history she must go to the doctor for a clinical breast examination and as the doctor recommends go through what we call as a mammogram which is an x ray most of the times mammograms are done after the age of 35 and again we have other modalities like an ultrasound of the breast called sonomammography and breast mri and lot of other tests so this is a small example that if somebody is doing a regular self breast examination these women can actually pick up a breast lump almost one fourth the size 
in comparison to those women who are not doing a regular breast self examination if you don't check your breast every month on your own even if there is a lump you will not be able to pick it up you will be surprised i will so many times you know see uh, women with such big breast lumps and when i asked them when i asked them you know it's been there for how long they will say madam i just felt it two three days back the reason they have never examined their breast the breast lumps grow slowly they take a very long time to become big the reason why they have picked it up so late it's because they have never checked their breast so the most important factor of the breast self examination is that it is an opportunity for all women to become familiar with their breast until and unless you know how your normally normally how your breast feels you will not be able to pick up a change a change can only be perceived if you know what is normal so every woman has a different size of breast different consistency many times what happens girls will ask me madam i have lot of pain before my periods before my periods my breast will become heavy it becomes nodular it becomes painful i can't even touch my breast even if i am driving a scooty it is painful so i always tell them that see this is a hormonal change and it is very common this is called cyclical nostalgia but this is not a sign of breast cancer so there are so many things in breast health which is not cancer so until and unless you do a regular breast self examination you will not be able to know what is normal for your breast so until and unless you know what is normal for your breast you will not be able to pick up the changes which are occurring so a monthly breast self examination is also the examination of the underarms the breast and the adjoining areas so as i said that one has to start doing the breast self examination after the age of 20 though sometimes even the younger girls have breast lumps so for younger girls i always tell their mothers that once a girl starts having her period either you examine her breast once in 2 3 months or you teach her so there is no hard and fast rule there is no such thing that if you do breast self examination before the age of 20 it's going to harm your breast it is just that because breast cancer is more common after a particular age so you know that is just a dictum to say that you start doing it after the age of 20 so when do you do a breast self examination so if you get if you're getting regular periods we always say that after periods are totally finished that means 5 to 6 days after your periods are over you do your breast self examination why we do at that time because this is the time when the breast is the softest and it is easier to pick up any kind of breast lump now there are some women who don't get periods you know those women who are breastfeeding or they have some hormonal problem or you know they have attained what we call as menopause menopause means now their periods have stopped usually menopause occurs around the age of 45 so these women can just simply choose one day you know they can just decide okay first of every month i do my breast self examination or 10th of every month i do or my birthday is on 12th so 12th of every month i do my breast self examination so that is a way to remember so breast self examination has to be done every month after periods is the best best time to do your breast self examination it hardly takes 10 minutes so when people say that oh i am busy i am you know i did get time to do breast self examination i always tell them that if you can't give 10 minutes to your you know to your own health and when you are spending so many hours on social media on taking care of your children your children's homework you know lot of your entertainment and everything then uh it's a sad state of affair women need to take charge of their own health they have to remember that breast cancer is killing so many women every day so uh you know and it also even if it doesn't kill the treatment of breast cancer is complicated it involves surgeries radiotherapy chemotherapy so if you want to spare your own body from this misery why not just give 10 minutes every month and do your breast self examination so as i said that until and unless you do a regular breast self examination you will not know how your breast feels normally so breast self examination has certain components one is how your breast looks do you see an obvious lump do you see an obvious change in the size of the breast do you see any change in the color or in the texture of the skin then comes the palpation or the feel do you feel any change in the thickness or the consistency of breast are you able to feel any lump and the fourth uh, the third component is do you find any secretions from the breast 
So the purpose of breast self-examination is to detect any lump as soon as possible. So how do you do a breast self-examination? It is very important that the both the breasts are properly exposed. So usually I tell my patient that when you're you know, taking a bath, you have privacy, you stand in front of the mirror. Most of the time in the bathroom, there will be a mirror. So stand in front of the mirror, remove your clothes so that you are able to see both, both the breasts and examine that there are, there is no difference in the uh, position of both the nipples. Examine if there is any obvious lump or swelling in the breast. Examine if there is any obvious change in the skin, if there is any redness, if there is any puckering or any dimpling in the skin. If you see any retraction, if the nipple is going in, you will be able to appreciate these changes in both the breast if you are looking, standing with both your arms uh, along the side of the chest and examining both the nipples in the mirror. Again, if you see any such changes, please don't be scared. Consult your doctor. Many a time, see difference in the size of the breast is very common. This is again a very common question which the girls will ask me that one of my breast is smaller, one breast is bigger. And I always reassure them. I always tell them that almost 15% of the women have around about 10 to 15% difference in the size of the breast. But then important is to perceive the change. If you see any change that... Uh, you know, last month, I did not see this in the breast. Last month, there was no redness in the around the nipple. There was no orange peel appearance. So now if you are seeing this, you must inform the doctor immediately. The second step in the breast self-examination is to put you, both your hands around the navel, squeeze the uh, navel area, and then bend forward. When you bend forward, the breast will hang and if you are able to see any kind of retraction, that means you feel that when the breast is hanging, some part of the breast is going in. This is not a good sign. Again, when you're bending forward, if you see any change in the size, if you feel any lump, if you see any lump or you see any retraction in the nipple or in the breast, you must inform the doctor immediately. Now comes the palpation. The important part in the palpation is that, that you are supposed to put your hand on the head. So first you put one hand on the head and with the flat of the fingers, flat part of the finger, you start feeling uh, the breast for any lump. So you have to uh, use gentle pressure initially and then you give a firmer pressure later on. You have to start palpating from the armpit and then in a clockwise manner. You follow like a clock from the outer rim and then you keep moving, keep feeling every small area of the breast with gentle pressure from the tip of your fingers, feel that you're not able to feel any lump. So you go all around the breast and reach under the nipple and try to feel the gentle pressure if you're able to feel any change in the breast. Not only the lumps, if you're feeling any hardness, if you're feeling any pain, then you must inform your doctor. Most of the time, the breast cancer lumps are not painful. So don't feel that because the lump is not paining. So it is okay. Any type of lump, it must be informed to the doctor. So anytime if you feel that there is lump, what you can do is that either you can make a you know note somewhere in your diary that on this date, I felt a lump and then go and visit a doctor. Otherwise, what I suggest, you can always download our CAN app from our website or from Google Play Store. Uh, CAN Protect Foundation has a very interactive a breast self-examination application. All these steps which I am telling you, these steps are available in English and in Hindi and in some local Garwali languages in our um, application called CAN app. And the, the application also suggests how to do your examination in a stepwise manner. And it is the important thing is this that in the application, you can actually mark the areas where you find any change. And this data is safe for you. Many a times when I ask my patients, that you know this lump has been there for how long they will not be able to remember but if you have marked it in the app it is there for years to come so it is important that you all download that app it's called can app it is available free of cost on google play store so today i request that all of you you download the app and you also motivate all your friends also to download that app and learn the breast self-examination again this uh, palpation which I told you that you start from the armpit and go all around the breast with gentle pressure and try to feel the lump. You also do this palpation in the lying position. So first you have done it in the standing position. You put your one hand on the head and with the other hand you start from the axilla from the armpit. You go all around the nipple in a clockwise manner and you try to feel for any lump. 
again you lie down on the bed put a small towel under your back and you repeat the same in the same manner you start feeling for the lump so many times i tell my patient that even if you don't get the time to lie down and check at least do this much that when you are taking a bath you are standing in front of the mirror you are in the bathroom at least in the standing position you must do the breast self examination and again don't forget to palpate under the nipple many a times what happens that women will palpate the whole of breast the armpit but they will not palpate under the nipple and believe me a large number of lumps actually start underneath the nipple and until and unless you know how the area below beneath the nipple feels you will not be able to pick up the lump so it is important that you regularly do your breast self examination so that you get familiar how your breast feels and at the end of the breast self examination you pinch or squeeze the nipple between your thumb and two middle fingers and find and look for any kind of abnormal secretions so uh, as i was telling you that you can download this uh, the same slides from our website also you can always visit www.canprotectfoundation.com our website has lot of information about breast and cervical cancer and we have videos we have lot of links and uh, our app is also available on google play store so when breast self examination is so simple you can do it at the privacy of your home and you can actually pick up breast lumps and breast uh, breast cancer at such an early stage why people are not doing it the most common reason i think is that they are not aware so that is why we are doing these uh, you know workshops and we i keep giving these talks i keep motivating women that you must practice breast self examination again there are a lot of women who are scared they are simply scared that if i pick up a lump what will happen again here i want to reassure you that the 80% of the lumps are benign that means they are non cancerous and they are easily treatable and again if there is a lump and even if it is cancerous if it is picked up in time at a much earlier stage your chances of 100% recovery is so high embarrassment women are so scared you know so ashamed to talk about breast we all have to remember is breast is also a part of our body the way we feel the rest of the areas of our body we must examine the breast also there is nothing to be embarrassed about your periods there is nothing to be embarrassed about your breast so talking about your uh, breast health is as important as talking about the health of any other part of your body so saying that i am busy i am forgetful is being very careless because as i am saying i am telling you repeatedly that 2 lakh women die of breast cancer every day so it is important that you take out 10 minutes every month and do your breast self examination now as i said that doctors hands are better trained you can always examine your breast every month but don't forget to visit the doctor at least once in a year for a clinical breast examination depending upon your age or high risk factors your family history the doctor will recommend whether you require an x ray called a mammography an ultrasound called a sonomammogram or an mri or lot of other tests are available here i want to you know reassure you there are lot of women who get scared they said you know mammography is very painful there's a lot of radiation in there is there i should not get an uh, mammogram done so mammography is usually recommended after the age of 35 years or 40 it's a simple x ray and mammography is one of the most time tested uh, you know tests which are done for the detection of breast cancer so if your doctor suggests that you must have a mammogram you must go and have one now again there are lot of other modalities like thermomammography sonomammography which are and an mri which are totally radiation free now look at this slide you can see that if you pick up breast cancer in stage 1 or stage 2 the 10 year survival and 5 year survival is ranging from almost uh, 75 to 85% if you are picking up breast cancer in stage 3 and stage 4 the survival has dropped to hardly 5 to 2 to 5% even in best of centers this data is coming from america where the healthcare facilities are so good so the success of treatment totally depends on early diagnosis and how will you diagnose it early by doing a regular breast self examination here i want to touch certain myths about breast cancer the most important thing i want to tell you all is wearing a bra does not cause breast cancer using telcom powder using deodorant sprays will not cause breast cancer these are the most common myths which are there so many times 
people in all my programs will ask me these questions that doctor if i wear a bra in sleep will i get breast cancer if i wear a padded bra will i get breast cancer if i have a thyroid problem do i get breast cancer so i always tell girls that you know you can always visit our website you can always you know we have a free helpline if you have any such queries you can always give us give us a call and get answers to all these things so important thing to remember is that if you want to prevent breast cancer it is important that you take good healthy diet you are you be regular with exercise so that you don't gain weight if you have any kind of hormonal problems like pcod or you have thyroid you must visit your doctor regularly take your medicines dosage very very properly if you have any uh, you know any other uh, history of any family history of any type of uh, cancer or you yourself has suffered from any kind of cancer then you should get your screening for breast and cervical cancer even more often so again as i know as you know that this talk was about breast cancer but i thought that today i will take an opportunity and also tell you a few lines about cervical cancer cervical cancer is a cancer of the uterus mouth or what we call as the area which opens up when the lady gives birth so cervical cancer or the cancer of the mouth of the uterus is the second most common cancer of indian women in india why is it so common you know one of the reasons when we started can protect foundation it was so uh, you know i was so pained to see that when i came back from uk a country which was hardly seeing any cervical cancer and in india i was seeing so many women dying of breast cancer of cervical cancer why because they were not doing simple test called a pap smear and nobody knew much about cervical cancer vaccination so cervical cancer is caused by a virus which is called human papilloma virus and like you know now you know that Uh, there is a disease called corona or covid which is you know we are all so scared of and this is called caused by a corona virus so same way cervical cancer is caused by a virus which is called human papilloma virus and as we know that we are all waiting for the vaccine to come for corona virus but there is already a vaccine available for human papilloma virus so if you take that vaccine in time you can actually prevent cervical cancer so what are the high risk factors for cervical cancer it usually occurs in women who get married early or in urban areas we can say that girls who start doing sexual activity at a younger age again girls who have multiple sexual partners who have sexually transmitted diseases who go through multiple abortions and those uh, women in villages who have multiple pregnancies at short intervals are more likely to have cervical cancer again cervical cancer is a very common cancer it does occur to a lot of women who don't have any of these high risk factors and the symptoms are very very common symptoms and lot of women will take these symptoms as you know normal symptoms of their uh, you know like irregular bleeding or vaginal discharge foul smelling discharge itching in the private parts bleeding after the sexual contact pain in the lower abdomen painful periods back ache recurrent infection so see this list of symptoms are such common symptoms which lot of women normally also suffer so just a word about how to prevent breast, uh, cervical cancer as i said that it is caused by a virus so there is a vaccine available which is usually given to young girls between the ages of 9 to 11 or 13 years best to have the vaccination before the sexual contact is started because hpv is a virus which is transmitted to through sexual contact so if a girl receives cervical cancer vaccination or the hpv virus vaccination which is a normal intramuscular injection like the way children receive for hepatitis for dpt and for tuberculosis so once a girl has been given uh, hpv virus vaccination the chances of developing cervical cancer will become very less again for women who have received vaccination or those who have not received vaccination there is a simple test caused called pap smear now what is a pap smear when a woman gets the infection of hpv virus and the time she develops cervical cancer there is a huge long period of round about 10 to 15 years during these 10 to 15 years there are a lot of pre cancerous stages through which the cervical cancer will go through and we can pick up these pre cancerous changes through a simple test called the pap smear and pap smear is a very uh, you know it's a very reasonable test it's not a very expensive test a pap smear will cost somebody hardly 4 to 800 rupees it is just done once in 3 uh, years and uh, once a woman is sexually active after the age of uh, 20 we recommend that they should start getting a regular pap smear done so here i want to finish my talk the purpose of this webinar was uh, 
you know to make you aware about breast and cervical cancer to tell you all how to do breast self examination to remove your myths and uh, doubts about uh, you know uh, these two important cancers which is the breast cancer and the cervical cancer and as i just told you that there's a there's an app available by our foundation uh, on google play it is available free of cost and i would request that all of you download the scan app and this is an interactive app which will help you to store a lot of data and it will answer a lot of questions you have in your mind about breast and cervical cancer here again i want to tell you all young girls that menstrual hygiene is very important the girls who get recurrent vaginal infections because of not maintaining menstrual hygiene are again more likely to develop cervical cancer so we keep our foundation keep having a lot of uh, seminars and talks about adolescent health and menstrual hygiene it is very important that uh, you know uh, during your periods you remain healthy you remain active you don't fall into the trap of those myths that you are not supposed to take a bath you are not supposed to wash your hair during periods in fact i tell all my patients to remain extremely active do all your you know jumping running your day to day activities and maintain hygiene take your bath two times a day every time you go and change your pad wash your private parts properly with water and after you change your pad also remember to wash your hands so there are certain small tips which young girls can start as early as 20 years of age maintaining good weight doing regular exercise refraining from drinking and uh, smoking doing your breast self examination regularly going through cervical cancer vaccination all these small small tips can really go a long way to keep you healthy fit and strong i'll be more than happy to answer uh, you know if any of you have any questions uh this brings me to the end of my uh, uh presentation so i will request devshree or kavya to you know take up any questions if there are any questions from the audience uh that was a very uh, uh knowledgeable and eye opening session ma'am actually i i feel everyone's uh, doubts and is cleared about cervical cancer as well as breast cancer there is one question uh, they are asking that uh, is, is it uh, there is, is there any age that we are out of danger of breast cancer see breast cancer can occur as early as 15 to 16 years of age and it can occur up to the age of 80 85 in fact earlier we used to we used to think that breast cancer is a disease of old women and women after the age of 50 to 60 years of age will get breast cancer and as the age increases the risk of breast cancer increases so once somebody is even at the age of 85 or 90 you can still get breast cancer all cancers increase with age because the cell damage is in, is increasing with the age you know the damage because of pollution because of radiation because of additives because of so many other factors all cancers increase with age but then there is no lower limit but most of the times 90% of the breast cancers are picked up in young women between the ages of 45 to 60 years of age but then we are unfortunately seeing that in last 20 years the age of breast cancer has come down to 30 to 50 years but then as i was telling you that i have seen breast cancer at the age of 16 17 as young as that so it is important that everybody does a breast self examination at any time there is any lump in the breast go and see the doctor 80% of the breast lumps will be benign they will not be cancer so please don't be scared of any breast lump yes ma'am uh, ma there is one more question like is there any vaccination for breast cancer no at the moment because see breast cancer we really don't know the cause of breast cancer there is certain type certain genetic uh you know defect occurring in the cell multiplication when the cells just forget to stop multiplying and they continue multiplication so at the moment there is no vaccine available for breast cancer but yes there is definitely a vaccine available for cervical cancer so what is important is at least what is available that one must utilize so it is a for cervical cancer it's a schedule of three injections like you take one vaccine now then one after two months and one after six months so that is how one takes the um, cervical cancer vaccination it's just a normal intramuscular injection which you take in the arm yes uh, there is more questions uh, 
Uh, Ma'am, there is one more question. How can uh, one join Can Protect Foundation organization? They are asking. Uh, see, if you go to our website, www.canprotectfoundation.com, uh, there is a, um, you know, there is a link for becoming a volunteer. And uh, once you click on that link, uh, we will get in touch with you and uh, we will uh, then tell you how you can become a volunteer and then how you can spread knowledge about breast cancer awareness in your own areas. If you want to arrange a health camp, how we can help you. We have uh, you know, a lot of uh, booklets available. We distribute uh, leaflets in local languages which teach women how to do breast self-examination. You know, women are very shy. So many women, they are not educated. They don't want to read also about breast self-examination in front of everybody. So we, uh, you know, distribute thousands and thousands of leaflets where breast self-examination is explained in a uh, in very simple language and uh, in simple diagrams. And you can even, uh, you know, uh, I would be more than happy if one of you can volunteer to translate our English uh, breast self-examination manual, uh, the, the leaflet into your local language and try to spread it in your area. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, there is. Um, I guess there is no more questions. Yeah. Uh, so, um, uh, on behalf of AFLET NCC, I thank Can Product Foundation and Sunda Prabhaga ma'am for collaborating with us. Uh, and yes, ma'am. Uh, so there are more, no more questions. So I think we can wind up the session, ma'am. Okay. Thank you so much, Kavya. And I want to thank your organization, the A Flight NCC of NIT Trichy, and uh, you know, taking this initiative for uh, breast cancer awareness. And uh, October, of course, is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, but then the awareness and education must go on and on. And uh, even on a later stage, if you want to organize any um, talks about any other health issues, you can always contact Can Protect Foundation because Can Protect Foundation believes in protection and in prevention. So we work about prevention and protection for a lot of diseases and especially in women's health. So thank you so much. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Uh, I want to end this session with a quote. Don't lose hope when the sun goes down, the stars come up. With this said, we hope everyone will stay strong and healthy. Thank you for joining us. Thanks a lot. Thank you.